Hey everyone, Herkaway here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you missed the last video, I talked about how you can create a bootable USB drive using nothing but PowerShell. Very useful in environments like mine where you want to have a little control and make it a little easier for your uh, junior technicians. Also, I mean, it's, it's cool that something can be done completely in PowerShell. The only thing you need is the ISO and the PowerShell script. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to talk about how you can make changes to the Dell BIOS again using nothing but powershell now this time is a little bit more than just one script but we'll get into that in a moment uh, but before i get into that uh, i do want to say if you like what you see here go ahead and hit that thumbs up really helps me a lot and hit that subscribe button uh, make sure you click on that bell notification so you can get notified of new videos that i drop uh, but before we get into the script, I do want to talk about something that happened to me last week. I, I attended a conference called Labman, and it's short for Lab Manager. Uh, and it's pretty much where IT professionals from universities across the country, the USA that is, uh, get together and just network, you know, talk about topics, you know, how are you printing, you know, what are you doing to do deal with your users, um, how, how are you... I don't know, monitoring your systems, you know, post COVID now, you know, how, how are you handling remote users? Are you still hybrid? Are you full time? So it was really interesting to see how other people are doing things and, and get their kind of response on, you know, how they're handling. And I could take that back with me in my environment and make some tweets here and there. So the really cool part was when they had something called Capture the Lab, which is a play on Capture the Flag. And it was PowerShell themed and pretty much you get challenges and you had to use PowerShell to whether you have to decode something or you have to find something in a file, you have to get the hash or something. Uh, and it was pretty cool. Uh, but I got first place. Um, I was kind of confident going in, but in some of the challenges, I was like, Ooh, oh boy. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm no PowerShell expert, but I can definitely find my way around PowerShell. So that was pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to going next year and hopefully we can get some more PowerShell participants. Now, with that being said, let's actually talk about the script that you see in front of you. So this is a script that I wrote back in June, maybe May, but definitely May or June 2020. And the reason for it, the well, the origin story is uh, in my building, we were actually adding another building and we were connecting the two buildings together. Um, now, when you, I, I'm not an engineer or an electrician or a construction worker, so if I say something wrong, please forgive me. But in our instance, when we were in the process of connecting the buildings together and connecting the power, we have power glitches in the original building. This meant that, you know, when the power goes out, all the computers also go out. Guess what? It's May 2020, June 2020. Everyone's working from home and everyone's remoting back into their computers and someone had to come on campus and power on computers and also power on for the computer labs because we turned some of the labs into remote stations where students can access still access software remotely without missing a beat so i was like man there has to be a way to turn this back on so after doing a little bit of research i found that dell released a powershell provider and this allowed me to change the bio settings uh, within Windows, uh, which is pretty cool. Also, I can change this in WinPE before Windows even turns on or before you get to the desktop for the first time. So that's also pretty cool. Uh, so there's a attribute in the BIOS called AC Recovery. Pretty much what that does is it turns the um, computer back on whenever there's a power loss. So if you know, the computer is powered on or it's powered down and it detects the loss of power, whether it's, you know, the breaker has tripped or you physically unplug the computer. 
once the power comes back to the computer, it will turn back on, which again, I, I, I think is awesome. Uh, so I was able to deploy this overnight and the next time we had a power glitch, computers did turn off, but they came back on as soon as the power came back on, which is awesome and very, and very handy. So there are some other BIOS commands that we looked into uh, called Deep Sleep Control, Block Sleep, and Wake on WAN uh, because some people may accidentally shut down their computers. Again, we don't want to come back on campus to uh, physically have to turn on the computer, so we set up Wake on WAN. Well, we have to make sure we enable that within the BIOS. Uh, so that's something that's pretty cool and awesome as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look into the script. So the first thing I do is I start a transcript. Transcript is just a log of everything that happens in the terminal or in the console host, right? So if you press H enter, that will pop up in the transcript. And of course, anything that gets written to the host will also pop up in the transcript. This is very useful uh, because let's say that I noticed that the computer didn't turn back on after a power loss. Um, I would, you know, check to see if this line here is actually there. If it is there, great. If it's not there, then, you know, something I need to look into, all right? So that's why we have the transcript. But I, can, I put this on, on every computer in the same folder and have it the same file. And, you know, I can easily check it to see, you know, what's going on. So it's great for troubleshooting for, you know, building the script, but also great for troubleshooting for a particular system. And this is how I learned that this provider doesn't work on all Dell systems. So if you have older Dell systems, so like an Optiplex 790 or a Precision T1500, something older like that, it's not going to work. Uh, but I found that maybe 2013, 2014 or newer were actually to work. So a Octoplex 7010 or a 5010 or a 3020, those should work without issues. All right, so let's move along here. The other thing is I'm checking the BIOS manufacturer to make sure that this is an actual Dell computer. All right. Uh, now, uh, if for some reason this doesn't work, then I have to use this, I have this else here. And I said, this is not a Dell system, but a whatever the manufacturer is. So Microsoft, Lenovo, HP, Hyper-V VMs, if, if we have that. Um, so this was actually useful because I learned that Alienware labels their manufacturers different than normal Dell computers. Uh, so for example, and Precision, I don't know, uh, 5820 would be a Dell Inc. What Alienware would just have the word Dell. Uh, so that's why I just have Dell and not Dell Inc. The other thing I probably could have done is did this here if it matches Dell. And, you know, this would return true or false. And then I can just say, you know, is if uh, Dell BIOS checker equals true. Uh, but you know, I didn't do that. I was really writing this script in a pinch. Um, the other thing I do is I check to see if the actual provider is loaded or in this case, module, the PowerShell, the Dell PowerShell provider is just a module that we can use. All right. If it's not loaded, um, as we can see here, null equals is Dell module. Uh, then we go ahead and just copy it down. All a module is, is a list of files and folders that can be used to interact with that particular module. And uh, now you may be asking, why do I have null first and, and on the left and not on the right? Uh, it's the way that null, null is handled. Uh, you can easily look it up. If you switch this around in uh, VS Code, it will let you know, hey, you may want to put null to the left. So pretty much I have the uh, provider and the files on a shared drive. Uh, and then this is the, I believe this is the system module folder. Uh, let me double check here. Yep. So this is a system module folder here. And then I just copy everything into here. I do have this error action silently continue verbos uh, because I, I do want the script to continue. But again, that's why I have this transcript here. So something, not working as it should, I can always go back. Um, 
and then I just do a start sleep. Uh, now, <clears throat> I this really doesn't matter anymore, uh, but I used to include the a uh, the uh, key and, and the password to the BIOS, which again we'll get into that shortly. I used to do that here, uh, but I no longer do that because um, I have it on a hidden share. All right. So, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. So once it's copied, now I can go ahead and import the module and I can start doing whatever I need to do. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with AES, it's the American encryption standard. It's highly used almost everywhere and it is symmetric encryption. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Don't, don't quote me at that. It's symmetric encryption or pretty much uh, the key is equal. Every everyone has the same key, right? It's not asymmetric where, you know, people are generating their own keys, right? So this is a, a symmetric encryption, and this is the key, and this is the password that is encrypted, right? So this is my bio password, but it is encrypted using this key here. And again, this is on a hidden share that only I have access to. Um, I looks like I spelled this wrong, but it, it doesn't matter. The, the script in production works, so don't, don't don't worry about that, folks. Um, and then this is the password that is encrypted. And then we tell BIOS, uh, we tell PowerShell, let's go ahead and take that file, convert it to a secure screen, and use that key and store it into this um, store it into this variable here. All right. So the next thing I do, I set the location to Dell SM Bio. So this is the actual provider that Dell created for us uh, when we imported the module. And the first thing I'm doing here is checking for a BIOS password. All right, so I try to get the password here. Oh well, no, I check to see is password set. If it's equal to false, then I go ahead and set the password. Now in everyday scripting this is a no-no right unfortunately we cannot use an encrypted secure string when setting the password at least in this version of the provider i haven't updated this script in a while because it just works for our needs uh, so this right here is plain text so this will take the bios password and you know display it in plain text now it won't show up in the transcript uh but it, it will be ran as plain text so this is ran under the system account so i mean it's it's a little bit of mitigate mitigation but at the same time technically the password is in in the clear however remember this is on a hidden share so only authorized people will be able to be able to get the key so if, if, if you have this, then most likely you are authorized. And if you're authorized, you don't really need it because you already know the password. All right. So just want to put that out there. If you were to do this in a live production environment, it is done in the clear. Uh, but going forward, uh, Dale does allow you to use a secure string, which was shown shortly. All right. So I go ahead and do a timeout for two seconds. And then I go to power management. You and obviously, power management has our AC power recovery, uh, deep sleep control, block sleep, and wake on LAN. There are some other things you can do as well. Obviously, you can disable a SATO drive. You can um, enable UFI path security, so you can make sure that only computers, uh, only you can boot from the internal HSD. You can't boot from a USB stick. Uh, which is all usually by, set by default once you set the um, admin password. Uh, but just as an example here, I go ahead and set the item to disable because I want to disable the sleep control and use this parameter password secure, BIOS password, and verbose. Uh, again, the, the um, password doesn't get passed to the uh, transcript here. And then I just write to the host deep sleep control and I actually get the current value after I set this, because I want to be able to see, hey, did I actually set this to disable? Uh, so if it is disabled, great. If it still says enable, then that's something I may need to tweak. Uh, so oh, sometimes it may be blank because maybe the attribute doesn't exist. Um, like for example, 
I believe AC power recovery. The this doesn't exist on laptops, but I, I don't I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to filter out this script to only run on desktops. If it's a laptop, oh well. Uh, but this is mainly for desktops, and you know I just wanted to cover all Dell computers. I didn't care about chassis types or anything like that. I just wanted it out there. Uh, the other thing I noticed was that um, sometimes we will get a recovery blue screen on power outages. Uh, so I went ahead and just said recovery enabled, no. And then there's this boot status policy, ignore shutdown failures. Uh, so that way, when we do turn a computer back on, it doesn't say, hey, we noticed you had a power failure. What can we do to help? I, I don't care. Just I, I got it. I, I know what I'm doing. And that's that. And of course you write that and then we set the location back to the system drive and that's the end of the script now unfortunately i don't have a dell computer i have a custom built and um this script isn't going to run but technically i guess we could try to make it run so i'm not going to do the transcript so we'll just do this here and we'll run selection and we'll see this here. This is not a Dell system, but an American Megatrends International LLC, which is, it's weird that they don't use Gigabyte, but whatever. So, and that's that. That is the Dell script that I have. Um, very helpful in our environment. And again, you can run this directly in Windows. Uh, so if you have, you know, SSCM and you want to have a require app, you can have this. Obviously, you may want to, <clears throat> either have a, a flag file for detection or use PowerShell detection and um, pretty much have these checks here, um, here obviously, and this one here to make sure that the uh, module is actually loaded and, and, and then it will load. Uh, then you can also run this in WinPE. I have this in all my task sequences. Um, I do have a task sequence condition that says, you know, manufacturers like Dell. Um, so that way, you know, this should always run regardless. Um, and if it doesn't, then, you know, I may have a problem on my hands. Um, I do know that Lenovo does have WMI classes. Unfortunately, uh, our Lenovo footprint is pretty small compared to our Dell footprint. And we don't really have a, um, any Lenovo desktop so this wouldn't really be handy and one thing I don't like about Lenovo is that you can't set the BIOS password through the w, WMI classes you it already has to be set so to me it's kind of a moot point um, if I'm going to change the password I might as well go ahead and change everything else as well if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you didn't like it go ahead and let me know and give me a thumbs down you won't know but i don't know <laughs> uh, but subscribe to the channel please and also hit that bell notification it really helps out a lot leave a comment below what kind of script are you running you guys have been awesome and i'll see you in the next one